Welcome to the Just Josh Podcast. Who the fuck is this guy? Hey, who the fuck are you? Huh? Who the fuck are you? This whole thing is a little weird. Ah, never yet fear, laddie boy. Zach, what's going on, buddy? What's up, Josh? How's it going, brother? Good. I was go. I was about to call you Brandon Boyd, and welcome. Yeah, uh, as I the love hair, the look, dude. as the hair gets longer, the bun gets taller. <laughs> I mean, you guys have like the same body type, like the same look. Like I know you don't look the same per se. You know what I mean? But like, you definitely got that vibe going on. I'm I remember. Uh, I can't remember. I know it was a Ballyhoo tour. I don't know. It might have been like one of the amphitheaters we did that you were on but someone was like telling me like oh my god you look like brandon boyd and i'm like i don't know who that is and he's like oh brandon boyd and he just kept going on about it for like five minutes and i'm like dude i don't know and he's like you didn't sing or incubus i'm like oh okay sorry i don't sorry. i don't know people's names i'm yeah. just totally out of that out of that scene. like their music but you know yeah i can name like a song but like right. you know you play it for me you know i can I, I could pick it up that way, I guess. Uh, I, I went to see him. <laughs> I had bought tickets for the, I've said this before in the podcast, but it's okay. We, had, we You weren't on that tour with us, but uh, I went out and I guess it was like two days in, we had a day off and it just, it lined up perfectly because I had gotten these tickets way in advance. It was like the 20 year of Make Yourself for Incubus mm -hmm. and they were doing Radio City and I'd never been there and I've always wanted to go there. So uh, I got tickets and it just happened to be this, like the third day of tour, we had a day off and I felt bad. Cause it's like the second day, basically me and Alex flew out and I was like, I've only been on tour for two days and I'm already flying. <laughs> like that looks so bad, but they were totally cool with it. And, uh, it was so worth it, man, man. They were so good. Like I, I tell everyone I can play every instrument above average, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm better at other instruments and you know, some than others. And there's much better like musicians individually, I'm sure, out there than me. But um, I can't sing, dude. And I just wish I could sing. Like if I could sing, man, I'd be writing songs. I just I can't perform them because the way like I like a lot of like coheed and stuff too. So I just love that operatic rap, and I could never sing that. So it's right. Plus, you would need bother. the hair. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, you're already kind of there. You don't have the fro, but man, you have great hair for. Hey, like, man. Uh, hair. maybe later on I'll take the hair down, and I got a fucking fro. But um, really? But How no, I mean, I said the same thing, dude. Like, if I could sing, I'd have been famous a decade ago. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just uh, you know. And it's hard uh, to find someone else to sing because you know how that goes because no one wants to like sing necessarily other people's work. They want to have a lot of input and have that be as it should be because you know you're the singer. You need to have some sort of a connection to it. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I went the complete opposite way because singers don't touch gear at all. And now I'm yeah. a crew member loading up buses and vans and trailers and shit like that. So it's uh, yeah. it was a totally different avenue, I guess. I've been trying to use this time to kind of add on sound too, if possible. I, I was I was going to try and do like that Sheffield program because it's not that long. And, you know, we had the whole year to do it. I was like, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. I can do live sound if we're doing it at like a bar or something like that. But tour is a whole different beast on its own. You know what I mean? Like different acoustics, different venues and stuff like that. And that that's where you need experience. I can't just hop on it, you know, for a good band and be like, yeah, I got this. You know, you never know. Yeah, totally. so many things I haven't been through as you as a sound guy, as young as you are, like, did you have to go through a lot of that, you know, when you first started off as far as going from even venues or to touring or if you went straight into touring, like realizing how different it is, maybe? Well, so everyone's got their own story and um, it's kind of cool because being in live production or just in the touring industry in general is something that you don't have like a set path you kind of just like find your way and do it mm -hmm. um and for me i mean like i was in a band and touring when i was like 17. um like i like i didn't drop out of school because i graduated or graduated a year early so i just left home at 17 um to go like join this 
like band of like I, I don't want to get into it, like drug dealing like hood rat kids yeah. but we were in like a metal band mm -hmm. and we were like signed to record label and stuff so um i did all that and i came back and my parents were like after like a year or two it's like 19 18 19 my parents were like well we saved up money for you for college since you were born you can either go to college or we're gonna spend it on a yacht <laughs> so i was like i'll take college um That's smart so dude but i had no idea what i wanted to go to right like yeah. you know some kid that just came off a tour for two years and like i was like well let me do music yeah so i, I went to orlando florida because that's where i live in florida right now um and i just like took this music and sound technology mm. two-year associate of science so it was a credit degree but um yeah at this at valencia college which is like this uh state college um and like i did my first year there and it was cool. Like, honestly, I kind of just fucked off uh, a lot of it. Um, you know, smoke weed, hang out with friends, go to the bars and stuff. Um, even though I was like 19, 20. But uh, then I just had like, I'd like my freshman breakdown afterwards. It was like, fuck, dude. Like, I'm not doing good in my classes. Like, I'm not really doing anything in like the field that I want to be doing. Like, mm -hmm. I would just kind of like, being some idiot in college and I was like all right well I looked around at everybody around me that was in school and they they weren't doing shit either everyone was like playing on their phone or or <laughs> like you know yeah. like asking dumb questions in class yeah. where it's like all right you're never gonna get this kind of thing so I really put it into gear and like one day I just typed up a resume which had zero audio shit in it like I, I pretty much like I it was just like retail jobs from when I was a teenager and like that I go to college um, but like I walked up and down downtown Orlando and like submitted resumes to everybody, like any bar, like I'm talking about bar, bar, like a yeah. bar restaurant, fucking any, there's some venues downtown. Um, and not one of them even gave me a chance or an opportunity except actually just one. Um, I walked up to the social, you've been to the social before huh. downtown Orlando. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. The long skinny one <laughs> yeah. um but i just like was walking there and uh with a handful of resumes and this bouncer it was like 4 p.m this bouncer was like putting out barricades outside getting ready for the show and uh i just walk up i'm like hey dude like is there like the sound guy or production people around and just as i was saying that this little short bald dude comes out just smokes a cigarette and he's like yeah it's that guy right there <laughs> so i walk up to him and i'm like you know, hey, I'm Zach, and I just give him my whole spiel and hand him a resume, and he's smoking a cigarette, looking at it, looking at me, looks back at it, and he's like, I'll be right back. Walks back inside, comes out like 10 minutes later. And he's like, hey, man, what are you doing tonight? And I was like, uh, hey, this is it. And, and he's like, all right, well, doors are around 7, so come about that time. I got you on the list plus one, and uh, just come back behind the soundboard and, like, you know, see what's up. And, uh, that was like a Lydia and Harvard show. So it was like, I'm a huge indie fan. So that was like yeah. the fucking greatest show for me. And I did, I just like- uh, And I that went, was your first experience like- First ever. Down? Yeah, I'd never like, it. I'd been in like recording studios before, right. um, but that was like my first real yeah. like production yeah. at some, you know, downtown oh. Orlando venue. Yeah. Um, and uh, from then on, like, he just called me up every time he had a shift and I would just like watch him. And then I would like go and wrap cables or like collect microphones or like hey, move pieces of equipment, move pieces of equipment off. Yeah. I didn't get paid. I wasn't like an employee yeah. of the venue at all. Right. Um, and uh, from there, like we just became best friends. We're still really good friends to this day. Shout out Peter Smith. Um, Shout out. But, Peter. <laughs> but um, I mean, from there, just kind of like, you know, your love and your interest kind of grows. So like, I, uh, I was like, well, what do I do next? You know? And he's like, um, there's this company that you can work for this uh, corporate production that does like, uh, stuff in like Disney and universal ballrooms for, for like corporate companies and whatnot. You can do that and they pay really well. It's a good start. So I did that for a while. And then like, pushed really hard in school and like did really well won a few like 
competitions, like national wide competitions um, for studio work and got like this uh, studio internship with I.L. Levy of Audio Hammer and uh, mo he's most famously known now for Nail the Mix. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I is uh sick, but I I worked with him and uh John Douglas and we did a lot of albums. I did like Monuments album, Whitechapel's drums, uh a lot of stuff for Alex Rudinger, uh Battle Cross, like a bunch of a bunch of stuff, um, like editing albums, doing drums and whatnot, getting to record um people and like sit behind IL while he's like mixing and whatnot. So it was like that time really kind of like gave me that interest mm -hmm. um and like a lot of experience to then like one day just go back to the social and uh because like facebook is how i get all my jobs mainly yeah um, yep. so like someone tagged me in a post from the production manager of the social and he's like looking for an audio guy anybody know somebody so at this point I had like two years of production experience and like, I just walked back in there with my resume, sit down with him. And like, I start going off my spiel and he's just like, hold on, dude. He's like, you know, these people, they say you're cool. You got the job. And I'm like, that's it. Yeah. He's like, yeah, you start tomorrow. And, uh, from there, I just kind of like worked at the social and then the Beecham, which is the 1500 cap room with like the big PA, the huge, Right. Uh, Digi Digico console and whatnot um, and took over that venue for like two years ran a lot a lot of huge shows like uh, the Bayside and say anything concerts we did like three days of newfound glory when they did like the that's like small club tour Bayside um, still crushes it dude like I'm I, I'm so stoked I got to see them. Like that show was way over capacity. Like it was terrifying how many people were in that building. Um, many. But uh, but to to get to your original question after I yeah. just went on that huge spiel was no, like, good. Was like that. It's it's a it's a whole journey. And like you yeah. know, it went from like, and I've done like a million other things in between that too. But it was a lot of like going to bars and like schmoozing and mingling with people and like. Um, then go on a production stuff at like six in the morning at Disney ballroom and then like going to work at the venue at night and then sometimes maybe being drunk or doing a little bit of drugs and then like going to your church audio gig the next morning, which I eventually got fired from. But, um, <laughs> but it was, it's a whole, it's a whole journey. And then, you know, uh, God invented drugs, right? So I don't see what the big deal is. I mean, I would fall asleep during the sermon um so <laughs> not, though. that yeah they would like throw things at me and be like dude you gotta fucking wake up and i'm like it's one microphone it's good man <laughs> man who's the lord but yeah but how how we met how you and i met was um like i was working at the social in the beach room for like two years and it got to the point to where like every band had their own audio guy and i was like why am I even more? What the fuck am I doing here? Like running yeah. cables for people, setting up microphones and stuff, like giving them a board mix and then they just go ahead and do it. Like yeah. and I'm just sitting there behind them. So it's like, this, this is not what I want to be doing. So um, a friend of mine who uh, just got me too, but uh, so I won't mention his name, but uh, it, he, that's okay. He, he gave me an opportunity. So uh, <laughs> with one of the bands that he works with. And um, he's like, you want to go on tour, you can do sound for this band, but you also got to tour manage them. And I'm like, I've never tour managed anything before. He's like, do you know, how, he's like, have you ever babysitted anybody? I was like, I, I mean, I guess. He's like, same, same thing. Hey, hey. Yeah, it, is. it really is. So it ended up being like the Monster Energy Outbreak Tour. And wow. then, yeah, from there, like, um, I did that. Uh, with like water parks and stuff like that and then immediately moved like during that tour i got a gig with this australian band chase atlantic and we did a few tours together and then i was supposed to do warped uh but then a lot of shit fell through and um i was scrambling to find shit because it was like the middle of summer and then uh a homie links me to alex and he's mm -hmm. like 
so-and-so hit me up to do this gig for them on this tour and uh you know i can't do it i'm busy with shakira over in europe or whatever like can do nice. you want this gig so i was like sure i'll take it and uh ended up being ballyhoo nice so i linked up with uh with Alex and he's like, yeah, you know, you get good references from all these people. You got this experience. So, um, let's do it. And then you guys pick me up at a fucking gas station in Florida and it's been, it's been history ever since. Yeah. I remember exactly the day we met you. Like the, you, you came in, I guess we were like first, for a second, we couldn't find you. And then like out of nowhere, you just like popped out and then got in the van. And then I remember you being really like, not aggressive, but like really just like, Hey, how's it going? Like, Hey. And then like, I think like 10 seconds and you're like, so anyone want to smoke or something? And I remember it's weird because like the younger me would have been like, you're the coolest fucking dude in the world. Like I, I can't wait to hang out with you, but I don't remember. I don't know if it was cause it was like that kind of a tour or we had new crew members or whatever, but I remember sitting there just being like, Oh my God, this is, this guy is too much. But then like five minute, five minutes in, dude, I was all about it. I was like, yeah, I just remember guy is totally, totally down. We were smoking. We had just started smoking or whatever. And you're like, yeah, I'm like my friend's dog died today. And we're all like, yeah. dude, <laughs> what the fuck? Like way to bring the mood down. Yeah, no one wants to talk about a dead dog. I, um, yeah, I remember that now. What a turd I must have been. <laughs> like if that was me getting in the van and someone was like man yeah my friend's dog died i would have been like how did you Fucking get this guy <laughs> yeah dude man you're um honest not just because you're on my podcast i truly mean this you're my favorite person to tour with i've always had a great time with you i just feel like we've always clicked and gotten along you know it's just real easy to work with other people that are kind of on your same level and that's half the battle you know that's happening. yeah yeah well honestly it's people that care and give a shit and that's, that's true that's I, difficult to find and that's something really that is. you've always done you know like you may not have like been on the biggest or the most tours but you actually like give a shit and like obviously doing the podcast and staying busy and like you know wanting to expand your horizons like mm -hmm. those are rare qualities to find in people and and much like how i was giving that example of like looking at people in school and even on tour man like you see it on the road like these people that don't want to be there or that yeah. um aren't like their heart isn't in it it's not that they don't want to be there it's just that the you know their heart isn't in it and um, yeah. mm -hmm. you just can spot that out like super or sometimes quickly. i think they have this false view of what tour is and they think it's going to be this big party the whole time or it's this awesome thing but they don't realize it is a grind you know you can, you, you know, you could be the most patient person, but on tour is just a whole different, whole different beast too. Yeah. And especially like, honestly, if you are partying, you get worn down the most oh, because yeah. like, you're not sleeping too great. You're working like 12 hour a day, working 12 hour days. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, and you're going like, I live in Florida. I was living out in LA. You live in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Fucking Pat lives in Chicago. Like, you know, every, <laughs> everyone lives somewhere different. So when you go to travel to these different climates and altitudes and whatnot, you start like getting fatigued and like sick and whatnot. So if you're drinking, doing drugs, staying up late, um, and then working hard all the time, like, bro, you get worn down the first like two, three days and you got a month to two months to yeah. go. So yeah. No, we had a great career, dude. Uh, again, like it's just, you know, tour can be a really great and rewarding thing if you have the right crew and the, and the people. And, and I'm very lucky that everyone I've worked with has always been really nice and really cool. Yeah, dude. Um, I love working with Ballyhoo. They're awesome dudes. Um, I can't say enough nice things about those guys. I mean, really, they're, you know, they're just good dudes. I mean, that's why they, I think I've always supported them. And it's weird because I think about it, I'm like, I was a teenager when I started listening to them, you know, like yeah, being a and fan. Yeah, now you actually work with them. Now you're in the tour of us. <laughs> it is really cool, but it, it's funny because it goes back to the, what you said before too. I think I get the question, how did you actually get hooked up? Because it's very rare that maybe fans of bands will actually end up getting to work with them or work for them. And I always tell them it's the same thing that you did. You know, you, you put yourself out there, you know, you try not to be too pushy. And you just have to keep going. Like I would go and make friends with the merch guys, you know, because exactly they were the first direct link to the band and just, you know, and then keeping in touch and trying to just support, I, I would say more than anything, what probably got me 
my foot in the door is that I actually went and supported the bands. I would actually go buy my own tickets. I would go buy their merch. I would say hi to them after the show without being pushy. You know, I wouldn't exactly. always expect to get put on a guest list or even when I work for them, even when I work for bands, I still buy their merch because I look at it like when I'm getting tipped and I'm getting, you know, paid by the band, it's basically like a discount. So, you know, for me, I have no problem. Now I know that there are instances where like, no, go ahead. We want you to wear the stuff and we want you to show it off. Mm -hmm. But I'll, I'll still buy that shit. <laughs> I don't give a shit, you know? So I think that was a big thing too, because people, I think people think like, oh, put me on the guest list and I'll bring you like a bottle of alcohol or I'll do like that gets in with the band. I'm like that, that annoys bands because they don't need the alcohol. Like you bringing them a bottle doesn't, you know, really do anything or benefit them in any way, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, like a lot of the times, I mean, have you seen it too with like the yeah. friends that I bring, uh, like hang out with and like bring backstage or like on our bus, it's just like, they're not burning in anything except being a Chilling. good person. Yeah, good exactly. Vibes. Yeah. That's that was what something I want. Yeah. That was something that I learned from uh my friend Peter when he was like mentoring me. He like had a bunch of connections with Warp Tour and a bunch of bands. Um and one Warp Tour, like me and him went and got like the all access backstage passes kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um and so we hung out with all the bands, like we're backstage the whole time, like and again, this is just something I'd never seen before. Like I, I'd been to Warp Tour and I've been to that kind of stuff, but I've only been like an attendee, never right. somebody like backstage and whatnot. And when we're at the end of the day, walking back to his truck to go home, he's just like, so what did you learn today? And I'm just like, well, you know, this and this or whatever. And he's just like, number one thing is to be a cool dude. Yep. Just be somebody that people want to be around that when you walk away, they're not making fun of because that fucking happens a lot yeah. um and just you know be somebody that like next time someone sees you they're like oh shit it's zach or it's josh like good to see you homie has it's been a minute like last time we hung out this happened and yeah you know. yeah be memorable in a good way you know don't be a punisher there's definitely some punishers out there for sure. <laughs> I, even I was a little naive to it because I've bartended and stuff before. So I was like, dude, I'm, you know, merch and bartending is similar. And instead of making drinks, I'm grabbing shirts or doing whatever. And I still underestimated. <laughs> and that's nothing against fans because, again, I've always said this. I, I never want to talk bad about fans. I just don't think they realize in the moment that they're doing that or that. Well, you happening. see you're the front line of it all. So you <sighs> see all the crazy shit. Like, I don't think people realize what I have to go through. I really didn't for a while. I, I honestly, I, I still don't. <laughs> Pat will send. I remember this one tour. Pat sent like a picture of some lady in like an alien jumpsuit or whatever, and I'm like, "Cool, I don't have to deal with any of that shit." Like, I've had people like. I mean, I again, you know, I want to give people the benefit of the doubt, and maybe they're drunk. Where they're again, they're not realizing that what they're doing is rude or annoying, or it's just there's a time and place for it. Like if we're busy and we're ten deep, and like this guy's talking my ass off and not allowing at least me to serve the other people while he's still because I can talk while I'm serving other people. So if like the guy wants to have a conversation, I'm not trying. But even sometimes I think the the weirdest thing is when you're super polite to people, but then because you're not giving them a discount or because you're not doing something you're suddenly like being rude to them or whatever. And they make a video like I've had someone now this, this, I want to say that this guy was bipolar or whatever and, and had some of his own issues, but I've had people like come up and like try and fight me. And I'm like, bro, I'm at work right now. Like really, you're really going to try and put this all out there. And then he lied about the whole situation, but you know, it is what it is, but it's just weird to me that like when I go up to a merch guy, I even learned, I don't talk their heads off. I'll go up, I'll buy the merch, I tip them well. And if I have something to say, we'll talk for a second and then I'm on my way, you know? Yeah, kind of yeah. I mean, and a lot of the times, cause you know, we're not in like an office atmosphere. We're not in like right. a right. store or a market or something like that where there's Black. like cameras and managers and all that kind of shit. You know, we're at, we're at venues where there's alcohol involved and probably to have a good time. And, and, you know, I think it goes both ways with entitlement. Like there's some, there's times where like fans feel entitled to act a certain way or entitled to your time. And then, and vice versa, like as, as either a band or a crew member, like we may feel like we're the cool guys so we can, yeah. you know, act a certain way or, or, or be more 
aggressive or passive aggressive towards people because we're yeah. having we're tired or we're having a shit day but in yeah. reality like you know you both got to be everyone's got to be nice to each other yeah um, for sure but i mean like i've even dealt with some shit you know like as a sound guy i get fucking heckled for like oh okay you really? the vocal or the, the really? snare is too loud or say that you know you? turn that guitar up it's a solo and it's like here you go. Here, here, here put yeah. your hands on the board. You do it then. Yeah. You know, I've I know wow. Alex has had his own things where he's got to push through the crowd and people are like, bro, back the fuck up. And he's like, I'm doing my job here. Like, you know, just get the fuck out of my way for a second. <laughs> well, um, I, I after swear. after all that though, saying that, I would yeah. take any fucking punisher. I would take any heckler. Mm -hmm. I would take yeah. a load in through the House of Blue Chicago any day right now. <laughs> I miss touring so yeah. fucking much no, yeah. yeah no yeah you're absolutely right i would too i think the number one for, thing for me was always like it's not hard one it's you know i treat it like a job not like a vacation which all of us did you know but uh you know you're a reflection of the band so like again the reason i brought that up was like you can be nice to people and they take it as you being rude is that you know my number one thing was always i'm a reflection of the band i'm like the first line, like you said the first line of defense so yeah, you just got to kill him with kindness no matter what and you and you know i never said anything even if there was an issue because there you know on my end there was never an issue i can't help what other people say or do as i just have to make sure that i'm being polite and you know serving them with kindness you know i think i think a really difficult thing is uh definitely a merch person but uh as a tour manager uh and if i don't hire or we don't hire somebody or have a service and we're doing VIP meet and greets, oh, that shit geez. sucks. Oh, <laughs> because not only are you like the line leader, you, but you like gotta tell people to wrap it up or sometimes like you're getting- yeah, Like I paid for those. You got like the band's giving you like weird looks cause like the the person's like, oh, like, you know, I tried to commit suicide to this oh. song before and like, you know, it <laughs> saved me and, and they're like, oh my god i can't deal with this like can you get this person yeah. out of here and i'm like yeah. okay time to go um but yeah so like that that stuff's wild but again like i'd take any of that shit uh oh yeah at any day to go back on tour right now even though like even though i've completely changed gears from yeah. touring and like yeah. i mean all of us have yeah like, it's been uh it's been uh it hasn't been a year yet um but it's feels like five year. fucking years though Dude, I mean, I was lucky because like, all right, so last year, uh, my Christmas tree, I decorated with all my lanyards and laminates and cool. uh, tour memorabilia. Like yeah. I was on tour 10 months out of 12 That's months crazy. last year. Yeah. It was fucking nuts. Um, this year, I have one lanyard, <laughs> one laminate. Yeah. And it, it was up. a Ballyhoo tour. It was a Ballyhoo tour. It was great. Uh, yeah. It was uh, the so iration. Oh, no, right. it, was, it was iration. iration. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was a great one, too yeah with uh ayaterra it was cool um man that seems that's just like forever ago bro <laughs> holy shit yeah uh no that was cool because like silver was on that and silver's the homie um i miss that dude he's like we're i feel like it's cool because him and i are both like on the same level of audio engineering so yeah. like he'll do something one night and i'm like ah okay interesting cool and then like i'll be setting stuff up and he's just like dude that like the way you're the the microphones you have or the way you're running that soundboard like you know how, how are you doing that so it's like cool to always bounce um bounce info and off of other it's engineers so, it's so great when you have someone like that on a tour where you can do that you know because like robbie i've recently you know like i said i've been trying to get better at sound so i can actually do that or at least have that on my resume so if like the sound guy got sick i could fill in for him but mm -hmm. i can still take like i got that camera because i'm like well listen i know my main job might be tech or it might be merch or even tm but i can also get you guys you know a year's worth of quality videos and photos that you can use you know so anything i can add to just add value to what i'm already doing you know i always try and oh a hundred percent and i think that's yeah. what everyone in the production industry has yeah. learned because of covid and because of this time that like you have to be uh multiversed you have to be um multidisciplined in everything that you're doing because like i mean shit dude for me personally like being a sound guy and a tour manager i i've been busy like i mean 
before COVID, like I had shit lined up with like arena bands mm -hmm. up until December of this year. Like we we're going to go on tour with Disturbed and like Hollywood Undead and go to Europe and all the shit again. So it was like, that was all cool, but it all went away with COVID. And um, yeah. I just remember like when it hit, cause like I just got off that iration tour and I was vacationing because I was living in Los Angeles at the time. Right. And uh, I was vacationing with my girlfriend at the time uh, here in Florida. And I got a call from my management um, for like the bigger band that I work for. Mm -hmm. And she was like, letting you know, the music industry shutting down in like two days, there's going to be a huge announcement, but I'm letting you know now so you can prepare yourself that like, until further notice, there is no touring. Like we have no idea what's going on. It's because of this virus and whatnot. And much like I didn't really hear anything about. And then sure enough, two days later, like national news, like everything's going on lockdown, everything's shutting down. And I was like, fuck, dude. Like I was in Vegas. That's wild, dude. I like, what ha what I happened I there? Like I was like, I'm, <laughs> if anyone's gonna get it, it's gonna be me because everyone's coming to Vegas from all over the world, you know. And it was literally like March. 11th 12th 13th 14th yeah that was the time like the 15th yeah. or yes. the fourth yeah the 15th there were days where you were making way more money than like alex and i combined i know so and and that's why but that's why i stuck with merch with ballyhoo of course you know i mean it's just and but again i said i've said this before if you take away the tips I'm really not making much. No, money. it's all, it's you tips. Guys. Yeah, it's tips. It, totally. It's all tips. I, in fact, I'm making jack shit without the tips. But so I would say, yes, I made a lot more, but I also earned every dollar too. Like, yeah, no, that, 100%. Like, I've seen you. I've like, seen you hustle. People won't tip me if I'm a jerk, you know, mm -hmm. so they can go say, oh, this guy was a jerk. I'm like, but you tip me $20. <laughs> so like, was I a jerk <laughs> or like, were you being difficult, you know, and you're just trying to save face. So um, but that was my always thing. I'm like, you know, I know that if I'm polite and I work hard and I'm not hustling people, but I'm like, dude, you should grab the sweater too. Cause it's, it literally, because you know, as a fan, they only do certain amount of runs. So if you want yeah. this, grab it now, you know, type of deal. So, you know, that's, that's me hustling and that's me working hard. So even though I made more, I didn't feel bad because I'm like, I earned every single dollar of the tips. You know, I, I didn't feel bad, even though I've made more than you. Nah, it's it, and see that that's not even like uh, a thing. You yeah, know, that's, that's we yeah. I, that wasn't like any kind of resentment or anything like that. No, it's, not it's just funny how that pans out sometimes. Yes, because like I remember being on a tour. It was like I think it was my second tour, like my second real <laughs> tour, uh, and we had like uh, a celebrity photographer. So not like that he right. photographs celebrities, but like. He right. himself, as a photographer, is he's famous. a celebrity, right? He's famous. Yeah. So, like, the band that I was working with had him out. Not only was he younger than me, but he was only doing photography. Yeah. I was front of house and tour manager and VIP dude, and we were doing like promo runs too. So, not only were we like direct support on a big theater tour, but we would like go to record stores and do oh yeah, uh, the like hits. promo performances with meet yeah. and greets or go to um radio studios and do interviews there and i had to like facilitate all of that shit as well and homie was making more than me and i'm like yeah. i can that can be frustrating as hell oh yeah oh yeah especially because it was like a major it was like warner brothers records so it was like it that was where it was like okay i gotta that's my fault because i gotta like you know so when you tell someone a number and it's like you know lower they're like okay sure i'll you know I was going to pay you three times the amount, but you gave oh, yeah. me this, so I'll do it. <laughs> Definitely always get your value. I've learned that. Steve Donovan a long time ago, and it was funny because I don't know if I like I hurt myself doing it too at the same time, where I used to, when I was first starting out, like you said, I would go even do shows for free, you know, and he's like, you got to stop doing that. And I was like, why? And he's like, well, you should at least try and get your value. You know, you don't have to be exorbitant or anything, but be like, hey, can you throw me 50 bucks for the show? because you guys are making $2,000 of merch, you know, $50 isn't going to hurt you type of deal. So I started doing that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't accept jobs unless I was getting paid a fair share. And obviously there's ones you take that are less paying because they're good jobs. And, and yeah, and, you know, obviously you got to price it out for the client. You know? Right. Exactly. But yeah, I've done that, you know, and, and I guess it works to a degree, but I also don't want to like 
miss out on certain things because I'm trying to be too picky or I say, oh, you're not paying me my worth. But I, well, but my point is I won't happen. work for free. I no, won't. 100%, 100%. That just happened to me recently because like I said, we were talking about shifting gears here and uh, with our careers. And I just been doing live streaming, like professional live streaming and like video work. Um, and I've been getting into these like million dollar music video productions down in Miami, like a friend linked me to a friend, linked me to a friend who is this guy that works for like two chains and Lil Wayne and stuff like that. So, but also because Miami, it's like a lot of Latin music, like Latin pop, um, and rap and whatnot, which yeah, I have no idea. One guy's not uh, I don't know anything about Pitbull. You trying to? Oh, okay. Yeah, that guy, Mister Worldwide. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, some of it's some of it's on that level. Like, um, yeah. oh, I'm sure, dude. Spanish music and it's, foreign it's music huge is even bigger huge. than a lot of it, American music in oh, the yeah. countries, dude. Like, oh, Sabina, a thousand percent. And I, I was surprised because I'm like, here I am, some gringo in Miami. Yeah. Uh, and like, I don't know shit about this music. Um. But like we're doing, I just did one for, uh, I'm sure, I think I can say this. I signed an NDA, but it was a while ago. Um, I'm not showing it. It won't come out for a while, probably anyway. (laughs) Yeah. So like, um, yeah, we did some stuff with this dude, Lune and this girl, Nikki Nicole. Mm -hmm. And they're like the, it was like a pre-recorded live performance. Um, but like Lune is like the equivalent of Latin Justin Bieber. Yeah. And, And Nikki Nicole is like the latin version of billy eilish like they both have like over 10 yeah. million followers and like, yeah like, all this wild shit like yeah. um but like here i am doing video work and sitting next to him and talking to him I'm like no fucking idea who you are bro like yeah um but like their yeah. music was was awesome but, but they probably uh, dig that too because you're just there you're you know you're there doing your job and you're cool whereas maybe someone else that does know him because i know like even though i'm really cool with people there are people i've met where inside i'm thinking like man i used to listen to you when i was a teen and i loved you back then that was kind of how it would ever affect us but you know yeah so. yeah no that's how it was when i Certainly. started working for uh madden agency was yeah. like when i met benji and joel i was just like geeking out and then i was just like oh okay you're like yeah you guys are just you're, you're cool yeah, yeah but um but yeah like no I, I shot myself in the foot before by like lowballing my prices like i was doing yeah other music other music videos for people because i'd never done any of this stuff before so i was like right. charging a lower rate and then the dude I was working with, he's just like, dude, you got to like up that rate, brother. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're driving out here and working really hard. Like these are corporate people like at Epic Records and yeah. like all this, you know, Interscope and stuff like that. Like you got to, right. like, they got money, they yeah. got money to spend. Mm-hmm. And my whole job is to live stream all the cameras mm-hmm. and all the angles are set up like my own, like GoPros or the cameras around the studio yeah. to, um, to like see everything that's going on for like the record label, the managers. I've done some stuff for the NBA. So like there's producers mm-hmm. that, are, that were doing like interviews um, via like Zoom mm-hmm. uh, and whatnot. And and like bring the audio in through the video switcher and all that kind of stuff. So like um, that saves people thousands and thousands of dollars for yes. no, you know, no flights, no hotels. You don't right. got to pay them their day rate or their per diems. Um, it's all remote. So all that money should be going to me. But, um, so it was like slowly upping my rate and then I finally did it. Uh, and I've gotten to like a level where I'm comfortable when I do it. And, uh, now I'm getting to the point where like production managers that hit me up, start kind of heckling me where it's like, Oh, you know, we only need this and this, you know, I uh, don't need all of that. Like, you know, trying what would to you cut do? the rate. Yeah. What would you, would you lower it? And it's like, nah, man, like I'm still here. Like the same equipment still being used to like, you're basically you know? renting equipment and my time and my labor. So like, that's, that's, exact, what, that's exactly so no matter yeah. what I'm doing, I'm still physically there. I'm still working. This yeah. Yeah. Hours. yeah. They're like, well, we only need like one camera. And it's like, I no. mean, Get the you're fuck talking out. about the difference yeah. of like two, two cables. Like, yeah. Two yeah. Cables. That's still not the amount of work goes in, even if it's a one camera. Yeah, no. exactly. But no, so like, yeah, they, they tried to like lowball me and I was like, nah, this is the rate, dude. And they're like, okay, you know, we'll hit you back. And they never hit me back. And, uh, and that's fine. Like, you know, yeah, I, missed out, cool. I missed out on a gig, like, but I'm not gonna like, 
no. lower my rate or lower my like worth uh, in their eyes to start to, to get some more gigs, you know? Well, it sucks we just talked about this because what I started to bring off air is that I'm looking for my little Jamie. I've been looking for one <laughs> because I've had a few episodes where I thought I was recording. Like I'm in the same boat. Like I've yeah. been doing video production and like Photoshop and graphic design and animation as well. And like, it takes me a while to do some stuff. And then with the other production company, with the like the wrestling stuff I do, Oh yeah, we have, we have a video guy, and he is just absolutely incredible. Shout yeah. out Drew. Um, he is, he'll do some crazy shit, and mm -hmm. like, it'll be the day of the show. We just recorded a bunch of footage like the day before that to to pepper in for our uh, live production. Right, and like he'll get twelve videos into me in like twelve hours. Like That's it'll be great. like the next day. I'll be setting up. And like finish setting up and he'll just send me the Dropbox link and it, it's just folder full of all the content labeled out and everything. And it's just like, holy sh And it's all just extremely crazy good quality. And I'm like, okay, fuck me. Like everything yeah. I was trying to do is just garbage compared to what this dude yep. can do. He's just, yeah. he's just a fucking master. Well, I didn't know you do the live streaming. So shit, if you had some time, eventually that's something I'd love to talk about. Off well, it's funny because that you say that just because I was talking to uh, my produce, like my executive producer for the the no piece stuff that we do, and uh, I posted like a photo of like this the setup that I've got going on here because like mm -hmm. uh, I got my in ears in and I got like a fucking microphone up here that you can't see. That's uh, that's like you know a condenser mic and whatnot. That's what I'm trying to do. Um, and uh, just out of the shot. This is yeah, it, it's like yeah. you got to get condenser microphones, but you know, I could hide more of the room. And someone told me it, a boundary mic or something like that. Yeah, I get a shotgun. Mic. Mic. It's a it's a shotgun mic. It's like kind of longer and you can hide it like, you know, somewhere down there and like yeah. um, and then it, it's directional. So it's like super like focused directly where it's pointed. Um, yeah. But it was funny because like my executive producer texted me after I posted the my story on Instagram. And he's like, dude, you can do podcasts. And I'm like. Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, I could just do it all. Because <laughs> one of my problems is I would love to, the reason uh, time is money, right? So the time that I'm sitting here editing, sometimes some of these videos are three hours long if I'm not happy with, because sometimes, you know, you catch an artist or someone on like a bad day or whatever, and they're not, you know, you have to really try and edit it up. So like I try to keep as much conversation, but I want it to flow too. I don't want there to be like pauses, you know, like big pauses mm -hmm. or anything like that. And Again, time is money. So if I went live and I had someone that could switch the angles live, I wouldn't have to do any editing. I could just put out the episode as it is, you know, and it's perfect. And I think when you go live, it actually makes the guests kind of be on their game. There's a lot of tricks too, you know, that you can do. Like uh, if you have a video, most video switchers um, have the audio follow function where, um, so like you can kind of see uh, how like I'm talking so there's a green square around my frame. And when you talk, there's a green, green square around your frame. Right. So what that's indicating is that we're in Zoom right now. So Zoom is picking up who's talking and like showing that like this person is talking, then this person is talking. Right. So video switchers do this, can it have the same option mm -hmm. where it can follow the audio and the camera will switch. Wow. So like sometimes I can you get annoying. You, you you can assign it and you can adjust the threshold. So like so if, if you, you were to both. make a small like noise or whatever, you know, while I'm right. talking, it it won't switch because sometimes, right. you know, it, it would it would but yeah. like you can you can have a video switcher that could like I'm talking now. So it'll be on me. And then right. when I'm done and you're talking it'll go to you or like cut to you if you're saying yeah. something quick and then cut, cut back to me automatic. You can do overlays over with the video switchers, right? Now with the video switcher. See, with, that's, what I, that's what I need. I need it to where it has my border and everything on well, it. Well, Technically, I guess you can. You would like, just need. Um, so the one I have is like a fucking $3,000 Roland video switcher. Right, right. Um, and it has two stills options where you can upload PNG files. Yeah. They have to be formatted to 1920 by 1080p, right. um, but you can make like anything in there. Yeah. So like I've had logos down at the bot, like down at the bottom over here. You can have borders and whatnot, but realistically, like that doesn't really give you control because it's only a PNG file and it's only on and off. Yeah. What you would want is to go into like if you're using like they don't have o something like OBS. 
Yeah, well, I use Streamlabs OBS, so it's just, it's virtually the same thing, but like I'll put overlays over stuff and you that stuff is fully editable. Or, so if, if that's my problem works. with OBS is one, it takes up like 20% of my laptop for some reason. I just got the new M1, which is insanely fast. Mm -hmm. But the other problem is, so like I have each camera and right now I'm only using one, but like mm -hmm. when I have multiple guests in here and we have someone over Zoom and here, I have like four different things. Now I have an HDMI port splitter, if that's to go out. Coming in, I have them all going in just into my computer, which probably takes up way too much like, you know, effort on the computer's end instead of having, being able to go into a switcher and then go into the laptop singularly. But then I lose the borders and stuff like that. And then my problem with OBS is that every single time you have to sit there and set everything up. And if you move the window or change the size of the window, it fuck like I haven't figured out how to just set and forget, like be able you can to set, you can set and forget all that stuff. All that stuff you're talking about, you can do even like, if you change the window size. Yeah. Because so when so, I have go into OBS and I change the zoom size, it then messes with the OBS. I'm like, fuck. Oh, with, you mean if you it. change your camera or I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to have this conversation. Yeah, we, we can talk about it. Yeah, uh, we later, got too much in protection. Yeah, you yeah. can't you you can do it, and it's just like a lot of like if it takes up a lot of your CPU or GPU power, um, that you would have to change your settings within it, like yeah. your resolution, your frames, your bit rate. I just need um, someone to come in and actually show me, and that's the problem. I got a guy from Sheffield. Sheffield was nice enough. I reached out to them. I said, you know, my podcast is starting to pick up. I'm actually that's why I have 12 episodes. People started reaching out to me. Yeah, like, yeah. I didn't want to reach out because, you know, I thought it was kind of tacky, but like, do you want to do some episodes? I'm like, yeah, of course. Like, I would love to. So I just, I've been just building them up, but I'm going to have to cut it off. But anyway, the point is they were nice enough to send in like an intern and give me interns. And obviously I'm not paying. Uh, I mean, I'll give them some gas and I'll feed them or whatever, but yeah. like, you know, I, I can't pay them a steady pay that I would love for. And some of them don't work. They're interns. They have other things that are going on, COVID, all that stuff. You know, there's so many factors, but that's why I'm trying to be as independent as possible. But I have to talk to you off air about some of this shit because oh, yeah. I just want to get it to the point. But let's get back to what we were talking about. So you're doing this production. You can see I have this WWE belt here. It's yeah. it's one of my like guilty pleasures that I'm not embarrassed about anymore. Like I, it was super popular when I was young. My dad took me to some of them. And it's just I've always admired the athleticism. And I didn't fall into the camp that was like, oh, it's fake because I knew it was fake. I'm not a fucking idiot. Like, no, it's <laughs> fake. But any TV show you watch is scripted. Even reality shows these days are very scripted and stuff. So to me, it's like, okay, look past the parts fake. No one's saying it's not fake. But the athleticism that they do now and all the creative and even getting hit with like a thin, like steel chair, it still hurts. Like, hey man, I don't want to get hit with a chair. So. <laughs> and like the mat, they think it's like this cushiony, like, and it bounces all this much. It's too. It's like wood. And then they put a mat just so you don't get cut up by the wood over top of it. But like that shit still hurts, man. Like you try jumping off your couch onto the floor on your carpet, it still fucking hurts, you know? Yeah. I mean, wrestling, uh, coming from somebody who is not a wrestling fan, knew yeah. nothing about it before I started doing this. Uh, by the way, uh, this is the plug No Peace Underground in Orlando, Florida. That's the this company is insane. that I this rep. Is like yeah. A whole different so, level than like WWE as far as like, it's not the typical. So that's the thing that we're doing wrestling. here is like that not only wrestling, but we do death match wrestling. It's, um, crazy, dude. Some it's, of it's bloody, it's violent, it's comical. And it's there's, real. There's drama and it's real. It's not fake. Like obviously there are fake aspects of it, but like it's a storyline. It's like right, right. it's the production that goes into it and whatnot. And, and like I said, being somebody who is not, uh, a wrestling fan but as a huge production nerd mm -hmm. that has become the plot for what we're doing here at no peace is like mm -hmm. no peace has been a company for years in in orlando um mm -hmm. but they've just been doing shows so they're just and they've been lit like i've seen some some pre-recorded material that they've done and like it's just no ring death match bloody violent um all real shit jumping off of like the fucking second story and stuff um but that was like a very niche market yeah. and like yeah. fan base so i came in and drew russ came in uh because of covid and we were like we need a new project or something to do and we along with jared who's the executive producer of this whole thing 
have really brought it to become this immersive program mm -hmm. and it's going to be even more i don't we're we're actually right after this i have to go down to orlando to have a venue walk through and like a meeting mm -hmm. about everything we're doing in the future um but it's going to be much more than yeah. just what we're what what we're like going to show you next but um the whole vision is i we're making a show for people who don't watch wrestling yeah like i try to show my friends like video clips or stuff on instagram and they're like can you like just turn this off like i don't want to watch this like this is really out of my element and i'm like <laughs> Hey, you know, me too. Like I, this is totally not my thing, but the level of production that we're putting into it with the video clips, yeah. the recorded material, the, the live camera angles, all that kind of stuff is like, I think it's very exciting. And we're bringing like drama and comedy into it. We're going to have a lot of sketches and stuff like that that go into it. So it's like, yeah, it's bloody and yeah, it's violent, but you're going to be entertained yeah. the whole time with like many different aspects. So, um, yeah. Yeah, run that clip back and like, let's, let's, just, let's just fucking check it this out real insane, quick. This is that guy yeah and, and this this material that's being played right now is like all recorded at no piece so it's like no ring death match at the venue yeah we have, we have joey janella uh from AEW now um mm -hmm. doing our commentary with drennan so like oh, that's amazing. we're getting we're getting a lot of um a lot of pickup from like wwe and um aew and like a lot of people especially like because um all the rest of the wrestling capital of america right now is in orlando because yep, of full sale um and everything so like we just kind of hit the jackpot with like a fuck ton of like actual professional wrestlers being there and like it's funny because i'm recording on my gopro right now and this the gopro this specific one is one that uh we use for like the like the mobile camera to get all up in the shit uh -huh. um and there's like blood stains on it <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's uh -huh. like it's real shit like yeah, um dude. it's it's definitely fun and interesting um we have a uh our first ring match at this like big production warehouse coming up in uh in january so next month that's where i'm gonna go do this walk through um later on today and kind of scope it out and see how it's gonna play out with what we're what we're gonna be doing that's dope, dude. Yeah, I definitely went down the rabbit hole the other day getting ready for this. I got sucked in. I started watching it. And it definitely is like they've had other versions kind of like that in WWE or different, you know, cutoffs of like the extreme type of wrestling, but nothing ever like this. And and I did when I was watching, I'm like, this is pro. Like they I can tell that you were putting good storylines and different stuff. Like I didn't watch full episodes or anything, but like I was watching. Yeah, it. no, because they're, they're long, but like you yeah. saw the you saw like the the intros that we do with the commentators yeah. and, the, yeah. and the actual video footage of, yeah. Cause I sent you the the link of one of those. Yep. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, like, obviously, you know, you don't want, you probably don't want to show like super extreme violence on your thing. Um, no, I don't give a so, shit. I just, it oh. sucks for the people listening that like, even that part that we showed oh yeah be on the podcast being like, what are they watching right now? This is, so I yeah. try to keep it a good balance of like, yeah, we're going to show stuff. This is a video podcast, but I do know, I would say 60% or 70% of people listen. 
Mm-hmm. They don't yeah. actually. I'm trying to change that though. That's why I only have the YouTube links up because I think it's interesting when you get to see the. People. Oh, for sure. Yeah, you got you got to be edited. able to. Like, you got to be able to like see what's going on. People like videos um, too. You know. Yeah, yeah, but like right now we're exclusively. Um, oh, with ITV. We're exclusively with IWTV. So um, we're gonna be working on some stuff in the future. Um, like I said, with yeah. with YouTube stuff, with wrestling podcast. Um, we're also gonna have like some um like 30 second or 30 minute like clips so it's gonna be yeah. like a drama of i don't want to i can't like tell any of the, like the ideas that we have but it's gonna be like yeah. pre-recorded like drama like a like a scene like a skit um and then it ties into a match and it's like an right. actual match that happens but it's not necessarily like in a ring or at soundbar like it could be yeah. like anywhere you know yeah. and like i said i don't want to give away the, a lot of the premises that we have um and then like wrap it up with the drama again so it's like mm-hmm. a 30 minute tv episode with a match inside of it so like it's gonna we're totally wrapping this production up like anybody who saw that video like that's mm-hmm. all drew russ he's fucking sick um footage is from black card films or uh film crew that comes out and works with us as well um you know uh, i'm not not as a wrestling fan i'm so stoked on this just because like there's no touring because of covid but also you know it hasn't even been a year and going from somebody who bought a gopro and was like messing around with it while i was skating to now being a part like a driving part of this entire uh no peace company and getting national attention and having wwe wrestlers we had ec3 come in um and do a match a death match which is super rare um yeah that is really rare yeah and like i said we have joey janela who i don't know a whole lot about him i've heard his name before but i know that he's like either up and coming or he's been around and uh, well, a lot of the the wrestlers that feel like start that go to WWE were in independence where there are a lot more of these underground kind of things anyway so they're used to it. And some of them, like, I think Sarah Logan, she just got fired. A lot of the WWE and AEW wrestlers were released because of COVID. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of them, especially because where you're located, uh, that this thing blows up. And I Yeah, well, I, there I, are wrestlers that we work with that, like, are signing. Like, they are currently signed and waiting for their debut or they're right. being scouted right now and it's like it is dope to have that and i just it was funny because like joey when he was doing our uh uh, doing our commentary last time like there's like light tubes and glass shards that like i know broken and fly like and i'm i'm sitting backstage behind this huge curtain but like i was still getting hit with shit like my hand my hand was getting cut and like there was joey back they because they stand behind me because i got like a whole video world with like a screen that shows all the multiple cameras and then like the the lot the uh, yeah the show and all our commercials and stuff that we do um so they're behind me looking at all that stuff doing commentary and joey's like holy shit there's like all this glass flying back here i gotta hide behind this wall i was like i did not get the okay from aew to be doing this so like if <laughs> i get cut and can't fight i'm fucked but this is awesome and so um yeah, so he wasn't was, wrestling uh, he was just doing the commentary yeah, I think he's going to uh, – he just moved yeah, down to Orlando. Just, like, I, I think he moved down to – he just moved to Orlando to be doing all, all the wrestling stuff going on right, right. now. And um, right. I think we're going to have him and our original commentator, Drennan, uh, do back and forth uh, awesome. between this because it worked out really well last time. And like I said, as someone who is not a wrestling fan, obviously I'm super passionate about this. And it's like it's really, it's really fun. And like I'm really trying to have people who are – turned off or grossed out or um you know not about violence or whatever like that i really want this show to be able to grab their attention Mm -hmm. at least for a little bit like at least be like i'm not super stoked that he just got pile drive through a you know a table full of barbed wire or like (laughs) the syringes they're sticking in each other are you know like that shit grossed me out but um yeah. yeah, I'm not about that, but like all the video production. The, the I don't like needles anyway. So that happened in our last match. And cool. um, 
because we have like headsets, like calm headsets where the production crew talk to each other because we're in right. different parts of the building, like the lighting right. and audio guys in a different section. And I'm backstage like with the video stuff and I, I'm talking to the camera operators, like telling them to get these angles. Um, but yeah, we were all on the comms like, all right, this is like, this is the point where I'm starting to get really grossed out right now. Like, and you have to watch it. Oh, yeah, I have to, and we have to make it look good. You, you, like, you can't like not watch it. <laughs> one, of, one of the camera guys was like, I think I'm going to throw up. I was going to say, has anyone thrown up yet? <laughs> no, not yet. But it, it gets, it it gets bloody. Get and, and yeah. so, but so that's the thing is like, um, yeah, it's like bloody and ultra, ultra violent. But um, I sent you that, that other clip and we just did yeah, a, a, yeah, we just did a, um, a, a themed show. Because we are in Orlando and we are a huge. Uh, Is it the Jane gay, intro? Yeah, yeah. We are a huge gay and trans LGBTQ uh, supporters. Um, That's awesome. And uh, Jamie Senegal, a uh, huge trans wrestler. And she's amazing and hilarious. And we gave her an episode and she produced it. Uh, her and Drew made all this amazing content and brought in all these great wrestlers. And, uh, so did like, she wrestle too? Oh yeah, she did it oh, with okay. us. With she also Sue Young. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She wrestled uh, with Sue Young and Sinister Minister Father James Mitchell. That's cool. Um, Was that in this clip? It, um, no. This this clip here is again just uh, like a reel of what 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 we're doing and like the oh. kind of production value. I don't I don't want to show um, any of the actual footage that we do. Oh, yeah. But it's I mean like it's along the exact same lines of what these reels are, but. It was cool to give Jamie this, you know, for anybody who saw this or for you to see, um, mm -hmm. you know, obviously there was like people bashing each other over the face and all this kind of stuff. Like, you know, that's cool too. But we also had this other direction that we went and it was like grindhouse, Rocky Horror theme. Mm. We added a lot of comedy in there and like, that's cool. Jamie it's does like hosting segments time. like Elvira. Yeah. And it's it's absolutely hilarious. She's like in lingerie and it's just funny as fuck. And the production value is great. And uh yeah, so like that's that's the direction we're doing where it's just like, yeah, there's blood and violence, but yeah, like, you know, we can cater to all these different kinds of people. Yeah, um, for sure. So yeah, yeah, run run this one back and let me okay, know. Cool. Thing. It's okay. very different from the from the last one. It is saw. very different. <laughs> That's dope, man. Yeah, I've you know, it's weird that COVID, as horrible as it is, has pushed us to have to expand and do other things that turn out to be like a blessing, you know, or like things that we can use to get to that next point in our lives as much as everyone feels. Like, yeah, things are really shitty to a degree, but at the same time, I don't think it's as bad as people think in the sense of, I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves or you put a lot of worry in ourselves unnecessarily. So, you know, I, I want to try and be positive on here. And I'd like to say anyone out there listening that I know it sucks right now, but at the same time, like, you know, use this time to maybe do something that you normally wouldn't do or, or something that you're passionate about, you know, like actually go and just do whatever you wanted to always do that you couldn't always do, you know, even if it's as a hobby, you know, and, and kind of go from there. Cause it's almost over. 2020 is almost over. I'm done. Yeah. It, this is, this has been the most fucked up adult summer camp yeah. that we could have had. <laughs> we could have ever had. Yeah. But also at the same time, um, just because uh, the calendar flips, a page doesn't oh, mean that no. uh 
you know, everything has changed and everything's different. Um, no, that, that is also very true. That's, as, I, you true. know, as, so as we, like new year, new me or whatever, all that every other. year, bro, every year. Well, that's what, that. that's all the recycled bullshit that you see on social media. That's not real life, you know, right. and I'm trying to separate the two better. And I think I've been doing a better job. It's like, if I didn't have the podcast, I wouldn't even have. And the only reason I post it on my personal page because I have more followers on there than I do on my other one. So to reach more people, you know, not not because I'm like, oh, look at me. You know, I hate it's weird when you already don't like your voice and then you have to sit there and edit three hours of your own voice. Like, it's, oh, my God, dude, I can't even imagine. <sighs> That's probably the worst part about doing a podcast. I have to sit you there know, to, to, give you the, to give you the props, though, bro, is, um, you know, I would don't even look at it like you know it's good to see that you're humble about it but it's it's not you're not like flexing on instagram you know you're not like making it a thing where it's like oh look at me you know this is what i'm doing you know like it's something you're passionate about and you want to yeah. share it with people you know and like mm, i always true. think of it as like as a kid you know like i would yeah go, i would go collect rocks and give it to my mom just because i was just like that's what it reminds you of this is no i mean that's <laughs> um i first remind you going of going and collecting rocks and man. giving it to my mom it's the uh, same admiration no it's it's oh, that yeah you're, like, just being you're like, proud of what you what have I, and you want to you want to give it to other people and you right. want to um, oh i see you want to you want to share that joy that you found within that uh simplicity um and and share it with somebody else and hopefully <laughs> they find enjoyment in it as well and um you know that's the same thing with yeah. i mean throughout my career and now throughout your career that we share what we do mm -hmm. not sometimes it's a flex but like yeah not not as a flex as right. as it's to it be like off like that yeah as it's like this is what i'm doing i'm okay like you know i may not be okay all the time but like right. i'm not like in a drunken slump yeah. and also like <laughs> people that are wanting to do something else like how you just said like you know you're given that plug where it's like you know follow your dreams do something you haven't done before go fucking work out go like yeah. go take a trip go do make a new hobby or something like showing like you doing what you're doing now with this podcast um with my video stuff with like anybody's anything that they've put into mm -hmm. and that they're showing and giving to other people that's also like giving somebody else hope that may yeah. think that they are hopeless or can't do something because of COVID. That is true. That is true. And, and you know what is funny? It is funny because I think some, some people thought this was like my job or something. I'm like, no, dude, I, I don't make money off this. I, I was telling you before. Looks pro. <laughs> <laughs> which is great, you know, but it is a labor of love. It is something fun. And I would love to turn these skills that I'm using and learning from doing this into a job. And that's, you know, what the camera work, the video work. And it's just something to add to the resume. And I think that's important for everyone. You know, you got to be diverse. You know, even I always hear the she's well, that's not like my bag or like that's not I think or like that's not my skill set. I'm like, well, make it your skill set if it if it directly relates to what you are skillful and, you know, um, but at the same time. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, dude, I. I think I think we've always gotten along because we're very passionate about the things we do, you know, and even if we're not always perfect, it's like at least we're trying, at least we're aiming for something, at least we're going down these different pathways to like find what ultimately is going to fulfill us, you know? Oh, a thousand percent, dude. Like, yeah. Because cause like you just said, you never know when some skill or something that you've done is going to come in handy. And whether it's helping somebody out or making a quick buck, you know, it's definitely worth expanding your horizons. And, um, you know, I like I to give you some props like i've seen you be doing the the podcast thing and that's fucking awesome and now you're doing the video and the photo stuff and you know it it starts out as a passion and then you end up on a tv network you know like that's yeah. that's how that shit just goes i would love know? to get picked up i need some help though i need to get a little jamie in here brother well, i've I, sunk way too much money i know in production <laughs> equipment i could put on i could supply an entire fucking venue 
oh, with, I'm sure. with shit except lighting. Um, yeah. I even but, got the lights and shit in here too. And it's still not bright enough to me on the thing. It still almost has a little bit of a haze. Dude, lighting is something I will never understand. It's a whole lot. Um, but yeah, dude, everyone's moving down here to Florida right now. Everyone is fucking. I want to go to Orlando LA. now. I don't want to go down like South or like, you know, St. Pete. I want to be right in Orlando because it's where wrestling is. It's where a lot of great music is. You know, one time I had a rider truck packed up, ready to go, like mm. everything I own in it. And I was about to start my trek to California. And like the next day or whatever, I got the call like, hey, yeah, so I didn't really tell you, but I got a job up in San Fran. So I'm not really ready to move in, but maybe I'll be able to, you know, do something. I'm like, bro. This isn't like a month before I'm supposed to move out all the way across the country. This is like the day of, the day before. And you're yeah. telling me you're sorry. Like, I was about to move out to an empty house. And I was like hitting him up for months before that. It was all good. It was all good. Yeah, it's it's all in the books. I, you know, I followed this. And I get someone having, you know, having, but he didn't tell me like he was looking for another job and stuff. And he didn't, you know, it was just very miscommunication. Shady. His end. Shady. Yeah. Well, see, that's why I'm glad it didn't work out because it probably was a good thing because I would have been stuck out in California, you know. I've been stuck out in awesome. California before. It's, <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, I'm sure. it's, it's been fun. I mean, yeah. Well, here's the thing. I've always like some people are like, oh, I, I don't like LA. I don't mind LA actually. I wouldn't want to live there, but I, I kind of like, you know, that kind of, you know, we're talking about like we come from a good place, but at the same time, you know, sometimes, sometimes I like that kind of LA style or that LA kind of snot, but like not that I'm snotty, but it's, you know, fun to visit or fun. It's to grunge, visit. dude. Like yeah. that, that's the funny thing that people, I don't. I mean, they don't realize that. I don't know what people think about Los Angeles, to be honest. Um, I think it's but it's not. Hairy, but it's, it's not. not. <laughs> it's definitely so not. Minus, like, if you go once you get onto the studio parking lot, yeah, you're fine. But if like, you're, if you're in Hollywood it, or Beverly Hills, yeah. yeah. But if you're literally anywhere else, it is not that way. Um, and it's not bad, but I mean, no. like, every house has a metal fence, like yeah. eight feet tall. Over like it. Venice and Beach, I, even is like sketchy. Venice Beach is definitely sketchy. I mean, I was staying out in Van Nuys and the block over a meth house exploded legitimately. Like the Holy roof was shit. blown off. Um, and like at least once a week, there were like choppers flying oh, overhead, man. like with the spotlights looking for people. And it was like, all right. And then you're walking down the street and there's like roosters and shit, which is really weird. It's like very city vibes. <laughs> what are you doing here? Yeah, no, that was, I just remember like every time like, your mama, that Mark, every time I'd fly back from a tour or a festival or something, like first thing, first three things that always reminded me I was back in LA was one to go to the dispensary, <laughs> two was that the Mexican corn guy was uh, running around, was walking down the street with his fucking horn, and that was shit some too. good shit. Yeah, and then seeing the roosters and the chickens in the street, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm back in Van Nuys for sure. <laughs> No, but I guess the point of me saying that was the places I've always wanted to move, I end up not really caring about moving anymore. Like California was big on my list. Now, not so much, you know, like not as much as it did before, at least, you know, to a degree. And then even Florida, I kept getting bailed on in Florida. I had two roommates that backed out or just never did anything. I was just like, man, come on, like this isn't a game. Like, <laughs> I don't know why people can't just communicate and be upfront. Like, I won't be upset. Like the other day I had someone kind of cancel i've had a few people cancel or just it's not cancel it's that they don't even say anything to me and i'm sitting here waiting and like oh, i'll yeah, give yeah. them the benefit of the doubt so i'll give them like a house i always press record at the time i think so it's recording once they get in so we can just get going so it's like i'm not wasting their time or anything like that mm -hmm. so they don't realize how much effort goes into actually setting this up really to a degree and then making sure everything's right because I'm doing like again, if I had a producer or I had someone that I, all I had to do was host, like I know where I could get this too. And like if we actually had someone that could follow me around and we could do segments that we could inlay, you know, and do stuff like that, um, I think we could really get picked up, especially if I networked and we got bigger guests. I and I've never been the type of person to go for the big guest. I want to go for someone that is willing to take the time and come on and actually talk with me because that makes better content. And then eventually if, as I get better and you know, I get bigger guests, it just grows organically. Yeah. So I've never been one that wants to do like clickbait or click, uh, yeah, clickbait, like subjects or topics. 
we'll talk about what's current or in the news and stuff like that or whatever's on my mind. But mm-hmm. people are like, <laughs> I always get like, well, what's your podcast about? And I'm like, I mean, you name it. It could be about anything. <laughs> like whatever's current, pop culture. Whoever the guest is on, man. That's, like, yeah, that's exactly. What the- that's what it's about. And that's why I was like, if I make it specific to something, it's going to get old real quick. I'm going to run out of stuff. But if I make it about the people that I'm interested in talking it with and I'm friends with, like, I just think it's, you know, that's why it's called the Just Josh podcast, because I'm not trying to be too, you know, it's not meant to be anything special. This is just conversations with people that I, I like. What were we talking about before that? I got high. This dab, I just got <laughs> I, I can smell that from here. From here. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's um, another thing. We were talking about marijuana a little bit. Did you know Maryland has really good medical, dude? We have some of the best in the country. I I don't know. I, I didn't know. I haven't been there in like yeah. since probably since <laughs> like we last visit. hung out or something like that. You got to come visit me. It's it's not a not an expensive plane ticket up to Maryland. I I hear pl- flights are really fucking cheap right now. Um, not as cheap but, as when COVID first started or during it, but like still very, very fucking cheap. Like Roundway, you could get for like 60, 70 bucks. That's cheap as fuck, dude. I'm pretty sure I saw Baltimore <laughs> or at least DC, which is only 30 minutes away from here, like that airport uh, or whatever, maybe 40 minutes, but still. Yeah. It was only like 60 bucks or something like that round trip from Florida. Yeah, There's- dude. Um, Fucking Florida's got medical as well. Um, and I mean, I, since I moved from LA back, uh, back home to Florida, I haven't really smoked weed unless like people I was with had it. Right. But when I smoke that medical stuff, it's just next level. I just don't want to get weed from like some random college kid in a parking lot. No, you know, like, see, I'm too old for that. And I just, yeah. went because I was just like, well, one, it's not even about the high, it's my back, but the CBD flower they have and the CBD stuff that you can't get anywhere else. You can only get it medical. It actually works um, for my back. That's why I got my medical card. And it just happens like, and even some of the, sometimes I'll do like the high T or the high CBD where it's like 17% CBD and then like 3% THC or like 5% THC. But yeah, dude, uh, shit, we talked about wrestling. We talked about your sound engineering. What else have you been up to? Is there anything else you want to talk? Because I'm editing. I'm just asking you privately. Yeah, I know. I mean, like. I could go all day, but I didn't know. I know you have to go to your meeting, too, so I don't want to keep you too long. But I want to. Yeah, I could stand for for a little bit longer. Um, Anything in mind or, like, what you've been doing? I mean, dude, honestly, like, it's being in Florida has been it's so bittersweet because Mm -hmm. obviously yes the headlines are true florida does not give a fuck about covid (laughs) um and it's disheartening to an extent like i'm i'm an avid mask wearer uh i i believe in social distancing but i also believe that you should be able to do whatever the fuck you want to do i agree Um, you want to go out (laughs) you want to go out and go to a restaurant or go to a bar like you should be able to do whatever the fuck you want to do just i agree just put a a mask on like um you know if if you want to go to a show like as florida's doing shows Mm -hmm. uh i just saw uh well i ran into uh nick from cashed out in orlando and they were playing a show uh there outside socially distanced uh limited capacity uh, temperature checked show. Um, I have Joey coming on. Well, it's cool. Talk to him about the tour. Uh, they just did a few days uh, yeah. all throughout Florida. And uh, yep. when I Trop, talked to them, yeah, yeah, with Trop, I saw Trop. Trop was uh, sound checking when I. Weren't you on that tour? Up. Were you on the Trop tour? Bumping I up. was on a Trop tour uh, with us. Like a, yeah, it was. Was that the f- first one? Was that it? Mm, we did a run in Florida one? before that, but I. Maybe you weren't on that. Was it? No, I was definitely on that. It was because homie had the full body G string. Oh my god! On the last day, and I did drink from the I did drink from the dick cup the whole day. Oh my god! Yeah, because you lost uh, laminate. Yeah, so I I was on um a Silver Sun pickups tour, and I lost. Oh, that band's old school, right? I've heard them. They were doing that's awesome. Big big numbers when we were on tour with them last year. They're great. Um, uh, we were, uh, I lost my laminate and I was a tour manager for the Rex and we were the direct support band. And 
I lost my limb in it, which embarrassed to say, but that tour manager's punishment, the headliners was, uh, I had to paint my nails. Oh, that's not uh, nice. That was nothing. No, he, he was like, he's like red or pink. And I'm like, give me that sparkly pink baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I had to, I had to paint my fingernails, um, because of that. And it ended up not being too much of a punishment, yeah. but we yeah, were all joking like, about how like you, I don't know if you watched that episode, but we were joking how like when you shaved, you look very feminine. Like you're just a pretty guy. Like you're look very, at me right now. I look like a fucking librarian. Uh <laughs> Yeah, but you look manly still right now with the facial hair. But I remember when you did shave, I was like, ah, I started to score. I'm like, oh, dude, this chick is kind of, oh, it's Zach. There's, a, there's an oh, Adam's apple somewhere oh, here. Yeah. yeah. No, but that's um, so funny. Like, well, and these days, dude, it's 2020. Like, I mean, we, it, it really doesn't matter. Like, even if I, like when I was younger, I definitely dressed more out there, you know, than I do now. I'm a lot more late, like just jeans and t-shirt guy, but I used to paint my nails. I used to do everything. Like, yeah, maybe not crazy. I wasn't like goth per se, but like, I was definitely like punk and skater, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. No, it, I was an yeah. emo kid too. Like yeah, I, got, I got made fun of all yeah. the fucking time. Uh, oh man. You know, if I was a good producer, I meant to have your, uh, young Zach emo pulled up because it's so, oh man there's so some, funny it's like super emo the best shit you, is like, uh you look that MySpace emo up on the dictionary and that's you yep right there to, to a t with the, oh you're my space oh my goodness i had like a way too tight <laughs> neon devil wars prada t-shirt <sighs> with the stud belt and actual girls pants who i stole from a friend checkered vans like before skinny jeans were a thing yeah, I had no, yeah, yeah, they were actual girls' pants that yeah. you'd have to sag way too low because, like, right. it was like they a low sag. rise crotch. Uh, and, oh, yeah. and then, like, I had the spiked back hair, uh, with like the fucking that neon, like, workout band that people put around their head, oh, and my. then, like, the Kanye shades where it was like the slits with the braces. So, like, Jesus. that was. That was me as an emo kid, like straight, straight raw. <laughs> and I, now you're a woman. <laughs> yeah, now like I look like a like a stay at home mom. <laughs> I love it, dude. This was a great conversation, and uh, I definitely want to have you back on at some point if you'd be down. Well, thanks for having me on. This was dope. Uh, I'm glad that you know we got to thanks. do it with no glitches and great quality. All right, buddy. All right, see you later, bro.